This is indeed part two of the weekly waffle. We've talked form, now we're talking racing issues. Still Danny Power and still me, Racetrack Ralphie. And um, now, now, people who have watched this for a little bit or even tuning in for the first time could pick two things between the two of us. Very astute people. One, you're tall than me. And one, Most people are. Yeah, and the other one, you're, you're a little bit older than me. Mm, yes, just. Yeah, you, you know, could say that. How long has the courting sub debate been going there? Because <laughs> it is shit. <laughs> Was it raised at the conference? <laughs> well, no. The quaddy sub is just ridiculous. Isn't yeah. It? What's yeah. going on? Like, did you do a campaign at the Melbourne Herald in the seventies or eighties? Yeah, we did. Yeah, yeah. Did. Temps, Temps, and I were. <laughs> Temps is still <laughs> throwing bricks at the wall. <laughs> <laughs> What's going on? It's it's it's. It, it, let's put the conference in context. Yeah. They had all the, it was a talk fest yes. of the bleeding obvious. Yes, we, we just, yeah, we it was really a talk were. fest of the bleeding obvious. <laughs> We'd no, like to look after the racing's customer. Yeah, which um, the fellow from um, Tab Corps said, you know, we're out to look after the customer. The very next day, they're not looking after the they customer. They did that to the customer. Yeah. Um, now, I missed the NASA Solar's rap, but what a bad experience. What a bad experience for everyone's favourite bet type. Is the quaddy because and by favourite I'm not saying the the one that uh, you know obviously most people bet win or trifecta or things like that. What's well, the tats lotto feeling? Is you can turn nothing into something, can't you? It's significant. Yeah, a lot. It could be life changing for you. You can win 10, 20, 30 grand. But it's also the engaging part of the sport because how many people don't go to the track? Most people don't go anymore. Uh, but with a with a group of mates, right? You'll turn for the quaddy this week. Let's put the quaddy on before I go to the footy. Do you know why the professionals like the quaddy? Why? Because Dumb money in it? No, no. If you bet four winners, yeah. they take 15%, 15%, 15%, 15% yes. out of each round. So you do it four times. Yep. Then you bet four winners in a quaddy. Tell you once. Yeah, tell you once. Exactly. Once. So it's it's popular. So People it's want it. Betting. We like it. The quaddy sub is such a disgrace, it's not funny. But you know whose fault it's not? It's not Tab Corp's fault. Tab Corp, look at what happens when there's a scratching. Mm. Right, Barricade's out. Everyone on Barrack, he goes to, uh, in this case, Sham or Wind, mm. which is another issue. And we don't have to give anyone back their money. Mm. Tab Corp uh, is answerable to their shareholders. Mm. No one else. To them, it's an efficient mechanism when there's a scratching. Mm. It's up to the racing industry and the so-called leaders at the racing industry who got up at the Australian Racing Conference and got all who very said, important. We must listen to our mm. punters and our constituents. We must listen to them. Well, they're not just punters, they're customers. Well, they've been yelling this for 25 years. So on the day, who's the, fir the first quaddy, uh, leg of the quaddy was all too hard. Right. Not many people out of the quaddy. Second miracle's life, not many right. people out of the quaddy. So everyone's in, there would have been people in for big amounts on a big day. Channel 7's broadcasting it. There's 12,000 at the races, hundreds of thousands of dollars in the quaddy, and most people still alive. Mm. And then there's a late scratching and they say, get stuffed. That is just such a disgrace. Now, let's go back historically. The sub was brought in for when computers couldn't have fit in this room. Mm. Right? So back then, it was all they could do. The solution is quite simple. Trade weight the ticket across the rest of the field. In other words, your even money shot, you've got 50% of the quality. Your 10 to 1 shot, you've got 10% of the quaddy. So that you're not out of the quaddy, but you no. get a smaller yeah, percentage. Different. You know, you sort of get the field, in other words, but a, a similar amount. Can't be done. Yes, it can be done because there's flexi betting now. Mm. So you can have 10% of a unit or 5%. Mm. So the technology's there. There is no excuse to stick it up plumbers clackers with something like that. It's such a disgrace, it's not funny. So uh, the entire racing conference was a waste of time because on, on just on that basis to start with. The other point being, and you talk, talk about the win, win take out, <coughs> why is the tab still taking out 15% for a win bet? Because they can. And because the racing people, mm. you know, those important mm. people who got up at the Australian Racing Conference. They should have trimmed them up a Something long fest, long. I nearly said that, I thought, no, no, we're on mm. YouTube, we better not say that word. Now, again, dumb business, because the people running racing think that what we'll do, we'll try and say how bad the corporate bookmakers are. They're naughty boys. They don't mm. put enough in. And the punters will eventually come back and start to, start putting money into the wind ball pool. It's price dependent. What other place uh, do mm. customers go to the, where, the, where it's the most expensive price? Mm. Exactly. Okay. And big punters, yeah. uh, unless they have to bet on the tape, will bet with corporate bookies because they understand the fact they don't like losing their 15%. 
So professional punters, now, there's a dynamic, and this is what's happening. The professional punters who aren't getting on with the corporate bookmakers, and corporate bookmakers say, well, you're a bit too smart for us, we don't want you. And then they get all this whole of a little bit closing accounts, they're only bidding into the tab pool, right? So, on Sunday, here's a dynamic. Danny the Fox wins the Kilmore Cup at four to one. Mm. Lots of four to one on course. Pays $2.90, why? The bigger players liked it. Mm. These blokes are so smart, that eventually, and whether we're talking wagering dynamics, they'll say, I'm sick of this shit about taking 15% out when I can go bet on footy at 101%, 102%. I'll bet on soccer, I'll bet on tennis. Let's not, uh, uh, well, the semi final at Australian Open, uh, Federer and uh, Murray, I think it was, 1.4 million was traded on Betfair. This is what racing's up against. Mm. So, so the win pool is just dumb business. Mm. Surely, I mean, if you want, you want to get more people wanting to bet on the wind pool on the tab. The whole thing needs a restructure. Oh, so it's interesting to see what happens when the Hong Kong pool comes in. You know, they bet ten million. Yeah. On Australian racing on, on Saturday, Saturday and yeah. on on Caulfield. Yeah. So that's ten million. I don't know what our pool was on Saturday, but you put ten million into the pool, and especially it's a biased ten million because they're going to bet. They bet differently to we do. They they back favourites. Number they, seven. They, was it number well, seven? they back Lucky's treble. They'll yeah, back, they'll treble, back, yeah. They'll, they'll back jockey favourites. They'll, they'll 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 follow trends. So all of a sudden you're going to get some significant sways in the pool. Yeah. Significant sways. It'll be a very interesting time. But their dynamic is they've got a monopoly. Mm. No corporate bookmakers, no. and they are the dominant sport there. Racing is not the dominant sport here. Proof being that the fantastic miracles of life story. I don't think it landed new service anywhere. No. Now well, didn't these... even get on Channel Seven in Adelaide. <laughs> exactly. So so we might like the story, but unless the general public like the story, no one gives a shit. So you've got to make it appealing to those people. So in Hong Kong, Hong Kong people can say, Oh, this is our model, this is why it's fantastic. Well they ain't got AFL, they ain't got NRL, they ain't got yeah. cricket, you know, so it's yeah. a totally different dynamic. Uh what'd you make of the uh, the fact the free to air coverage though, that is a plus. Big numbers watching. Fantastic. Yeah. Yeah, I think uh, and it's uh, I it's a work in progress, so it's going to continue to improve. Um, I, I watched a little bit of it on Saturday, and it was good. And I thought they covered. The, they did a. Uh, Keeney went and did an interview with, uh, you know, the Miracles Life people during the week. Yep. So that was a, a lovely Neil story. Neil Kearney, very good, very very good sports reader. So that was, you know, yeah, yeah, they did it well. They did yeah. well. I, 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 for what, for what the general public or the people who, who haven't got Sky, or TVN, want, it's perfect. And anyone thinking that, oh, you know, it might affect attendances, you've got to look at the fact that every other sport, once they've gone live against a gate, the attendance has actually increased. Friday Night Footy at the, AF, at the AFL, Australian Open tennises, attendances have gone up since they've been live against the gate. You need to have your sport as accessible as possible, and then people like it more and then get involved. If you said you flicked it on, I was at the races, does that mean, uh, do you know if Simon Marshall was dead, mate, and Amish McLaughlin, a bit less on the solarium from the week before? Much less. Right. It had faded off. <laughs> but it might have been they just didn't have time to get yeah. the solution. Maybe it was that. The actual writer miracles alive, because we just quickly talk. Now, I, I try to use statistics in what, what I do, and, yeah, and mm. which and it's never definitive. That's what makes the sport interesting. Uh, Lauren's uh, stats on favourites, I, I worked out between even money and 10 to 1. She was batting about 10% on 20% of the market. So it was down a bit, you know. Mm. So I thought, well, she could get in trouble. Mm. You know, she was. Three back the fence. I didn't fact. I factored in it could be a, a, thing, a result that happened for it. Mm. I didn't factor in a great ride. That was a fantastic ride. <laughs> it was the and the commitment rides. to um, to get into that gap. Yeah. Uh, she created the gap. I'm uh, once a girl was on her outside or just uh, half length in front of her. It, she put her filly right there at Monster Girl's rump, and as soon as they hit the bend, uh, she was there yeah. and put uh, pushed the. And the Sydney rider, who I think himself got a little bit lost, Christian Reith. Yeah. Um, and it was it was over. It was a beautiful ride. She was lucky, but um, she made it luck. She made it luck. Yeah. She made it. It was a fantastic. I reckon some jocks could have got beaten on her. There you go. Because in that, on that day, Maybe. because they might have waited an extra 200 metres and then the gap closed, but yeah, yeah, she, she uh, fortune favoured the brave to use an old cliche there. Mm. Uh, we looked at the thoroughbred.com.au uh, this week, and you, you, you're poo pooing the stats about Baraki first up. Oh, well, you know, in the new market. Every, you know, I love a stat. Yeah. I love a, hist a racing history stat. Get but to, to say get that. Get to our age, it's. It's, it's all you've got sometimes. That's the only thing going to lift you. But to, this nonsense about saying. He's got to break a 95-year hoodoo yeah. of winning the uh, new market first up. Can you think of a good a top-class sprinter running first up in a new market? 
No. No. <laughs> I can't either. And I've no. been in the game 40 years. I've, yeah, there's been Kings Rose last year, but she was on the way to the Doncaster. Yeah. And there's uh, a few stayers, like a Lloyd's run a, run a stayer. Bart, I think, has run a stayer first up. In but he's generally... But they're horses that are using it as a stepping stone. Race. He uses the Lightning Stakes as his stepping stone for his new market winners, doesn't there's he? There's about five lead-up races. They always run in one of those. Yeah. Very, usually, if a sprinter can't run in one of those, he yeah. often is not right. But this horse is okay. He's had two trials. He's going to have a bit of work stuck to him. He's going to have a jump out. He'd be fine. It's a nonsense. The stats aren't relevant if you did the figures on first up runners in the in, in the race. And moment of change will give him a kick in. Uh, all the stuff there on the racetrack, Ralphie. Yeah, something two ninety nine uh, for both Friday night Mooney Valley and uh, Flemington this Saturday. Just find a couple winners, good odds. Hopefully, we can find a couple more. I'll be there. I'll be there.